All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Code Like a Pro. Today we're going to be talking about the first letter of the SOLID acronym, the S, the Single Responsibility Principle. I will be your host, as always, Dylan Israel. So what exactly is the idea behind the Single Responsibility Principle? Well, it states that every software module should have one and only one reason to change. Now, what does that actually mean? It means that we're going to have smaller classes, we're going to have single responsibility classes, and this is going to allow us to limit the impact of change. So, um, you know, what does this actually mean? Uh, um, uh, so this is a quote from uh, Uncle Bob, who is a very big proponent of the solid principles, essentially the creator. Gather together the things that change for the same reason, separate those things that change for different reasons. So what I take that to mean is we're going to have cohesion where it matters and we're going to decouple our code where it doesn't matter. Now, most people focus only on making things as small as, a, as possible uh, to automatize things to such a degree because that's more so the issue. More so people have things that are just too big, but you can also go in the opposite direction. You make things too minute and too small. And, um, but that oftentimes doesn't get any attention. But I wanted to bring that up because that is an issue in itself. So let's go ahead and uh, I wanna share this link actually real quick before we jump into the code. But this is, a, um, this is a link to Uncle Bob's blog where you can read more about the single responsibility uh, principle here. And um, I think it's really helpful. So go ahead and check that out. I'll put it in the description below as well. But Let's go ahead and see an implementation example of how we might use the single responsibility principle. I want to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. You can check them out at devmountain.com. You're saying, Dylan, I'm looking to level up my code game. How can I get better? Well, Dev Mountain is an excellent choice. They offer not only iOS, boot camp courses but also full stack javascript salesforce quality assurance ui ux some of them are online and some of them even include housing so you can get up and go today check them out at deadmountain.com all right so let's take a very simple example here of how we are not using the single responsibility principle and how we can go ahead and use it to make it better so uh, I'm doing this in TypeScript. You can just think of it as JavaScript for the most part. Now, everyone should be somewhat familiar with the cash register, right? We have ways, you know, they charge tax. It keeps track of our totals. You know, there's a subtotal typically and a gr the, the grand total, which is your subtotal plus tax and any fees. So we have a very simple example here. And we have a function called calculate total. All calculate total does is we have, it updates our grand total. So it gets the total with tax. And then we email a receipt to, to the client. Say, hey, thank you for your business. Your total was, you know, $100, $100 if you're balling hard and you buy a lot of groceries or something. So um, you might be saying, why is this breaking the single responsibility principle? Well, should this email, private email receipt actually be sending anything in reality and mind you it's an empty method or should the cash register be worried about having logic to email a receipt and the answer is no it shouldn't what what should happen here is that there should probably be an email class or message class that handles this that we then instantiate that class and have it go there and the reason for that is it takes it's still going to send an email right because our mail class is going to handle that logic but that's really where it should live right and that way if we change our code down the road where you know what we need to update how we email uh, clients customers it's all in one central location and we now we now have a single reason to change right before we had two reasons we had well, if the total changes, you know, if the cash register code changes, great. We have, it's right here. But also, if you want to change how we email customers and clients, we have to go into every class that we had this email 
logic, and we then have to modify it. Well, instead, if we had a central class that handled that, we can go ahead and and do exactly that, that in one central location. So it makes our code a little bit smaller and um, puts it in different files. So how might we fix this? Well, pretty straightforward, right? We go ahead and create a new, um, what's a, let's just call it email, email uh, class.ts. We can go ahead and export a, uh, a class here. And in here, what we're gonna call this email. And email is going to have a message. And notice how we, before we had send receipt, this is a more of a generic class where maybe it's gonna be something like send message, right? So we'd have a public send message and in our example, it just took in a, um, a message. This would be a string. And this would go and email, you know, let's just say we uh, pretend that we have something that's an email, we'll console log the message. Whatever our lar logic here does, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we could simply go ahead and take what's here uh, and we're going to create a, in the constructor, yeah, we can create a property here and we'll, uh, we'll call this public email equals new or public, God, maybe mail would have been a good name. Public uh, email, so a new equals a new email, new email. Just go ahead and import it from there. Oh, you know what would be better actually? Let's just make that a static method, right? Because are we really ever gonna create multiple versions of it? This is a little bit more of object oriented, but this is going to be static send message. And now this is gonna do the same thing every time, right? Similar, if you're not familiar with static, it essentially means that this is a property or a function on a class that you can use, you can import it once and use it and it's not gonna be something that you're ever going to necessarily redo. Um, so here we have uh, email.sendMessage, our static method, and we'll go ahead and just pass that message like so. And we can delete this logic here. And now we've set it up so that it has one reason to change. We're still sending an email with the receipt, but our cash register, the only reason our cash register changes is if something regarding the cash register domain changes. Well, now that we have this email class, if anything in our email class changes, then it will auto update if in our cash register or anywhere else we're using that class because it has a single purpose now. And so that's really what what the single responsibility principle is trying to instill. A good rule of thumb when you're trying to decide what's what is if you find yourself having to put and or or into your variable names and function names, you oftentimes will see that you probably don't have things broken down enough. And because of that, you're gonna. You're probably breaking the single responsibility principle. A good way to um, to also help, and so, sometimes developers will find themselves in this. Um, developers who aren't used to like maybe object oriented programming will find themselves into a situation where they start doing like boolean flags. That's another example. A lot of times of not always, but where you might instead of perhaps extending a class or. Um, using some inheritance, you might be having using a Boolean flag to change between two pieces of logic that do two completely different things. That's another um, sort of gotcha to watch out for when using the single responsibility principle. But as always, guys, I hope you found this video very helpful. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, and of course, um, uh, check out my courses in the description below as well as the books I recommend. Uh, which I think um, are a great tool to help you level your game up. But look forward to the next video where we dive into the open close principle and we'll give uh, some examples of that. See you guys next time.
Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course. Get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.